Welcome to another episode of Alberta Backwoods Adventures. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to build, raise, and tarp a teepee. Looks like a roadblock. Good thing I got a chainsaw. Thanks to my little brother's generosity, I've gotten myself a brand new chainsaw. It's coming very handy today. Now if you guys watched my other cutting firewood video, you'd notice my saw is just not up to par. This one here, she starts on the first pull. Loving it. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. She also cuts like a dream. So the first thing you want to do is scout out a nice spot to set your teepee up. I've selected this one here, right beside the Tay River, Alberta. Beautiful place. Now you see what I mean when I say they're shaped like a post. Very tall and skinny, relatively straight all the way up. Now the ones I'm looking for are like these ones laying on the ground here. They're skinnier, they're easier to get at, and I can cut them into the perfect length. You're going to need about 12 poles to erect your teepee. Now I've cut all the trees I can off the ground, so now I have to select them. This one right in front of me here, nice and perfect. Good and tall as well. You'll see they're all dead, so no one has to worry that I'm cutting live trees. Of course you want dead trees for that. Now traditionally, the natives in my area would use 12 poles on a teepee, but because this is for one man and a dog, I've selected eight. Eight poles. Now what you want to do is cut them all to the same length. Now because wood is so valuable to survival out here, we don't waste any. We'll be taking these cutoffs with us for firewood. And we have our poles nice and cut all to the same length here. Next thing I'll do is show you how to put up the first three posts. Now here we are all loaded up in our modern day horse. Let's head her back to camp. So now that you've selected your poles and the site you're going to build it at, you're going to want to go along your poles with the hatchet and take off everything like this. These things here. Anything that'll snag stuff up. That'll take a while, so I'll see you in a bit. So the next thing you'll need is about 50 feet of rope. It's important that it's very long, so you can wrap it around the teepee at the top from the ground. Now you want to set your poles up in a specific manner. Give me that rope. Give me my rope. Give me my rope, you thief. 
You thief! Now to start, you take three poles, preferably your lightest. You put two beside each other in this manner. And one on the other side. Make sure it's overlapping at the top. Okay, and you want it at about a 30 degree angle. The next thing you're going to do is tie a clove hitch around the top. And for those of you that don't know what a clove hitch is, don't worry, I'll show you how to tie it. Now let's see if we can get this on the first try. That was a bit of a challenge by yourself, but it always goes good with two people. But I'll show you why now, the reason for the long rope. What you want to do is go around the outside, wrap it around a couple times, okay? Now you can see that I've wrapped it around twice. Next, you're going to add one pole at a time and continue the wrapping sequence. Now I've got it all wrapped and tied off at the top. Next is to add your canvas. Now I've got canvas here. This is the best material to use, but you can use a tarp if you need to, or even poly if you have to, whatever you have handy. For me, I have this tarp. Now the next step is to fold it out. Now that it's folded out, you want to take a raising post like this, tie her off at the top, tie her to the post at the bottom, and then you stand it up and unwrap the canvas around the frame. Next what you want to do is take these loose ends, put some rope through here, tie it back to the post there. Same with this loose end, back to this post here. Now you can clearly see that my canvas is too small for this. The reason I showed you guys this was for demonstration purposes only, the procedure for erecting a teepee. I do not have the proper canvas, but it still works as a shelter from the elements around a nice little fire. More wild horses, they're everywhere here. Today I'm going to show you how to start a fire in a very realistic scenario. If you got yourself a good survival kit, you're going to have at least a hatchet and a, a knife, a tinder box, and if you're out in the bush, I'd hope you have some bullets. So I'm going to show you how to start a fire. Let's say you have one match left, but you've got all those things. Let's get started. Now you're going to want to start making yourself some small tinder. The knife comes in handy. Forgot to mention, you have to 
make sure that it's dry wood. It seems obvious, but gotta be dry. Now I found myself some dry birch bark. So what you're gonna wanna do with this is start breaking it off into small pieces, like these here. all your bark up into small pieces. Take the larger piece of bark that you do have, make a little pile on there, like so. Next, if you've got a good tinder box, you're going to have some nice dry stuff in there for starting fires. This here is bark from a black poplar tree. On the back side, I just scraped it up with my knife. So I'm going to take that as well, just a bit of it. So it's been about five minutes now, and that fire's still going. It's a good lesson. Keep your fire going, especially if it's your last match. You don't want that sucker to die. I'd like to take a moment just to thank all my viewers and my subscribers. You guys are the ones that keep me going, keep me making want to make more movies. So I'm thankful for that. Take care, guys. See you next time.